Hello and welcome to the video on classes. I'm really excited to go in depth and show you guys a little bit more about uh, classes using C Sharp. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, I think the best way or the best explanation I've seen of classes is from this picture. So we have a class which is essentially a blueprint. Right, so if I have a class, uh, a car class, um, this car class has many attributes and functions of a car. So this car can, it can go, it can speed up, it can slow down, um, it has wheels, it has paint, um, it has um, a certain number of seats. So these are all attributes and functions of a car. So when we make our own, um, so when we make our own objects, we can use the attributes and functions to make our own types of cars. For instance, this van, this Audi, and this sports car. So let's see how that would actually play out in code, and how we can actually do that. First, we would use the keyword class, and then we would call it car because we're making cars, and let's give it one function. And this is to essentially um, say its name. So we'll actually say string um, car car name. Perfect. All right. And then we'll return a string. Oh, excuse me. We'll return. Um, hello, actually no, we won't return that, we'll return van, or this is the car name, perfect. Okay, so now we have a function called car name, and it returns the car name, and we have a class called car. So, now let's make our first um, object. We can call car right here and just as we would with string and making a variable we can make a car object by saying car car or my car object. Alright and there we have declared a car object but as you know C Sharp will yell at us if we try and use it because it is not instantiated. So we need to instantiate this car object. And we will do so by using the new keyword because we're creating a new car. And these parentheses essentially construct this new car for us, this new object for us. And it gives us something to use. I'll go over constructors in a later video, but for now, just know that these parentheses essentially create this create a car class for us to use and um, or an instance of car you could say and it creates a new one for us a fresh one so we can use it in this object right here so now let's try and access well, actually since it returns a string we can print that out right in the console. So we can just say, actually, yeah, we'll just say it right here. We can say my car object, all right? Actually, to avoid confusion, I'll take it out of this right line. So we can say my car object, and then inside of it, we should be able to access car name, but we can't access it. So what's the issue? The issue is something called an access modifier. And there's actually none of them available or that we see right here. So this is a new concept and a very important one. So by default, this means that this method is private. Same thing here. The static void main is a private method and we cannot access it outside of this class. So in order to access it, we need to explicitly say that it is publicly available. Whoops. 
So we put public before it in a class. So inside the class, we can um, explicitly say that this method is public. And we can do the same thing with classes as well. Oops. But in this case, there's no need since it's already available to us. So inside, if it is public, that means it is globally available. It is available from wherever. So as long as we can get access to the class, we can get access to this car name. So since we have access to this class, now that we put public here, we can get rid of this error and car name shows up. All right, and that is a very common mistake, um, especially with uh, new programmers, is they'll make a class, um, make an object, and then they'll try and tap into um, what's inside of the object, and they can't because they forgot an access modifier. So we know now that we can access it with this public access modifier, and we're good to go. So we have just called this method, we have this object, and then we've called the method inside of the object. So let's go ahead and actually, since this returns a value and we want to see it in the console, we can just make a quick variable and call it um, car name equals, and there we go. So all we have to do is put car name inside this right line and call it a day. So as we run it, we will see this is the car name. Perfect. All right. So now let's uh, exit out a couple of these. Um, we have the car name. And what we should do now is we should customize it. So inside this car name, we can put string car, car name, okay? And since it is lowercase, we can say um, that we'll, we know that it is a variable. In fact, actually to avoid confusion, um, we should put this as the car type. All right, now we want to concatenate the string. And so we can just say this is A and then car type. Perfect. Now car name is looking for a parameter. So my car object, we can rename this to um, um, sports car object. All right, and as we copy that, we can paste it in here. My car object is no longer available. And we just put it right there. Okay. So now car, sports car object is a new car. Okay. Um, we've essentially gone, we have the blueprint, we've gone to the factory. This is the factory constructing this new car. And now it's just a basic car, and now we can customize it to be whatever kind of car we want. So we've said sports car, but there's nothing really here that tells us that it is a sports car. So we have this method car name to give us this name right here. So we can just pass in this parameter sports car and run it. This is a sports car. All right. So that's how we know that. Um, this is a sports car, essentially. So we can do this with multiple objects. For instance, we could create a van and have it be, um, we can create it from the car class. All right, boom, we have a van now. So what we can do now is say van name equals van dot car name and then we can say van. Oops, put, forgot to put the var. All right, so now we have a variable called van name. It is equal to um, this van object calling its own car name. So then we run this. 
There we go. Oh, whoops. I didn't. I only wrote the car name. So we can do console, right line, van name. All right. So let's run this again. This is a sports car. This is a van. So you see, this is just a blueprint. And every time we hit new, that it creates a brand new, fresh version of car for us. And sports car object and van object are completely different. Uh, for, well, they, they do not rely on each other in any way. They're two separate objects. And so we can manipulate them and do whatever we want to them um, without um, harming the other. So now... We can, uh, we can do that with other objects as well, other cars. Um, and that is how you create an object in C Sharp and can access um, different methods in a class. So join me with me in the next one where I'm going to explain the keyword static. And I'm going to also explain how and why we weren't able to use um, other methods in our program that weren't static. So um, if you remember from the last video using functions, um, we we're running into that issue. So I'm finally able to talk about that because we have now figured out what objects are. And so it'll actually make sense. And so I look forward to seeing you in that one.